Welcome to WiseCast. This podcast was created and fully funded by WiseOption with the intention to provide helpful information to our users via an informal conversational video podcast. This video podcast does not receive funds from third-party sponsorship or otherwise outside donations. It only represents our personal opinions. We want to share with you our experiences, and it should not be taken as personal, business, medical, or veterinary advice. We do not disclose any of our clients' data or personal information and respect our clients' privacy. This is a conversation between us and our users, but includes information we feel may be helpful to all in the horse industry. If you are not yet a Wise Option user, please tune in and let us know what you think. Tune in while working on paperwork or on the drive home. Even though this is a video podcast, it was designed to be listened to without the video as well. So while driving, please keep your eyes on the road and save your questions for when you reach your destination. If you would like to leave a comment, please go to the Wise Option discussion group on Facebook, where there will be a designated post for the podcast. So, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to WiseCast. We're so glad you guys could join us today. My name is Rachel Pankop. I am the Sales and Support Manager of Wise Option. I'm here today with Eduardo Amelia, who is the CEO and founder of Wise Option. Eduardo, how are you? Hey, Rachel. I'm good. Thanks for having me. It's really good to be here, and I'm really excited about this special podcast where we have a very special good friend and guest. So tell us a little bit about our guest today. Today, we are really excited to have Dr. Glenn Blodgett, head veterinarian and horse division manager at the Four Sixes Ranch, join us today on WiseCast. Dr. Blodgett began at the Four Sixes in 1982, and in that time, he has not only led the ranch to become a premier center for equine reproductive services, but has helped pioneer the horse industry. From serving on the board of directors for AAP to serving as president of HUA in 2015, Dr. Blodgett has played a vital role in the progression of the equine industry rightfully earning himself countless accolades for his years of service, most recently the Golden Spur Award in 2017, and will be soon inducted in the AQHA Hall of Fame. We are so excited he was able to take time to join us today, and without further ado, we would like to welcome Dr. Glenn Blodgett. Dr. Blodgett, how are you today? Great. Yeah, I'm glad to join y'all. Good. Well, we're very glad to have you. Thank you for joining us. Yes, most definitely. It's a new times, a lot of Zoom sessions, virtual, uh, even friend celebration and doing parties online. I think this is our new reality. So everybody, I think, is trying to get used to the new situation. Um, how are you guys doing there, Doc, with this pandemic thing? Well, I mean, you know, as as both of y'all know, we're, in, we're, we're isolated out here. Uh, you know, we we live in the second least populous county in Texas. Uh, we got far more animals out here, mainly horses <laughs> and cattle, than we do people. Uh, and we don't have a lot of traffic. We don't see a lot of people other than just some of our neighbors and stuff. Uh, and that's been, I guess, good during this pandemic. Uh, we have had, uh, you know, of course, we do have to get supplies and stuff. We've had to deal with that, but but we've been everybody's just been staying home, working hard. And it's just been a normal, pretty normal, hard working breeding season for us thus far. Uh, and uh, like I think I've shared in the past with y'all, both of y'all, that about the only difference we've seen is the the difficulty we've encountered shipping <clears throat> shipping semen, cool, cool transported semen by air. Uh, you know, the airlines, you know, really cut back on, cut, cut their flights back. Uh, and there's a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of flight cancellations, last minute, stuff like that. So we've, uh, we've had to deal with that through the season and, and, and encouraged our clients where they could to, to, to receive semen by FedEx, uh, who, who is our, or other alternate uh, uh, gotcha. for, for shipping uh, semen, other, other than by courier. Uh, and we do a lot of courier business 
but of course we can't serve the whole United States with a courier, obviously. Uh, which we, we are could, pretty much in the could. hands of the air companies, so that that that's yeah. what put this struggle. I see what and, you're saying. Yeah, and, and FedEx has been great. I mean, they've been normal business as usual for them. We, we've utilized them heavily uh, for shipping semen and, and also just receiving a lot of our necessary supplies that we need to continue to operate. Any concerns regarding packaging? Do you guys have any special protocols or the way you guys handle the boxes that you receive? Well, uh, initially, uh, I think we all were. I mean, uh, I think people found themselves putting on exam gloves and stuff prior to opening up boxes and packages. Uh, particularly things they received from Amazon, stuff like that. Uh, but I think we, we kind of moved away from that. Everybody got more comfortable with it. And, I, uh, and we've, you know, we've just, I think, abandoned doing that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when anybody goes away from here now, they, they're really cautious about where they go and, uh, you know, and they do a lot of personal biosecurity type stuff, you know, from hand sanitizers, uh, um, you know, the wipes that you have access to, masks in, in many cases, stuff like that. Uh, uh, but it's, you know, in veterinary medicine, and particularly in the type of environment that, that I work in here, you know, biosecurity has always been on our minds on a, on a year round basis. Uh, and so we're, we're used to taking, you know, steps in that direction. Uh, I, and I think, well, and I think ever, you know, the, the general public now, if they, if they've been watching TV, or reading any kind of news, I, I think they've been pretty well educated in biosecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah I, I think I always see you guys with all the gloves and all the apparatus that takes the, the practice itself. Uh, but one thing that I was curious is about the couriers, because after all, they are the ones who are mostly exposed. When they come to you, do they use masks and, and uh, or? or no, that we, no, we we don't see them uh, now. The now FedEx, uh, I've never seen any of them wear a mask. But FedEx uh, and and I believe our UPS, uh, they wear gloves of some type when okay. they when they're uh, uh, delivering, handling packages and stuff. Uh, but that's that's about all we. we 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 see on TV we see people wearing masks stuff like that but out here and we have and we have masks uh, of course we use surgery masks when we're doing surgery but uh, but we have masks like you see people wearing when they go to gotcha. town and uh, but uh, anyway we we don't well uh, they, they, in regards to the present, I think everybody is on the same page. We're trying to do our best. Uh, if you had the little crystal ball, what are the events you expect to happen for the horse industry in the next 12 months? Well, I'm, I'm already seeing uh, preparations made by sale companies. Uh, and, and, and I guess uh, we would find put, put ourselves in that same position because we we host an annual sale here horse sale but uh, these other companies are all making preparations for uh, online bidding uh, that that's that's with no delay uh, or, or, or very minimal delay if possible uh, they're also making preparations to have extremely good video uh, of, of the animals 
uh, that may be available even prior to sale day for for people to do evaluation, better evaluation. And that video would be prepared in a much different way than than it's ever been prepared before. There's there's some uh, several different companies out there right now that are actually lobbying and different sale companies about about their uh, platform that they've got to offer. So, so I think we're going to see things like that. Uh, I think we're going to see horse sales and horse events uh, that uh, are, well, some, uh, there are many of them have been canceled for, for, for this year. Um, hmm. You've seen some of these major rodeos, Shine Frontier Days and, Calgary Stampede, they're, they're probably two of the biggest in the United States, especially during the summer months, and, and they both canceled performances for 2020. Uh, and and many of the horse shows have been canceled, and, and the ones that are continuing to go forward are, have got some pretty heavy restrictions. Uh, I've been hearing uh, a, a lot of them are bound by, by the city's whatever the city is requiring on a from an event standpoint that they have to abide by those rules and uh, and and those rules are almost changing on a daily basis i've uh you know sat in on a conversation yesterday with a uh, a uh, executive director for a major equine organization that puts on shows uh and they they're having to walk through this very thing and and, uh, and and they're thinking about having shows later on this summer and uh, uh, so it's a it's changing on a daily basis Ho hopefully we don't have another secondary surge on this pandemic i mean there's been people say that that might happen either sooner or even later this fall or something but anyway as far as the return of the remuda, you don't know yet if you're going to have the crowd coming for the sales yet, I believe. Well, I, I don't anticipate. I mean, I think our crowd number will, will be down. You know, right now we're planning on having the sale, but we're, we're actually investigating some of these platforms, like I just mentioned, where we can, uh, where they can be there just like we are today uh, with a good 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 quality video image uh, good sound and uh, and so forth and then maybe provide something for them to evaluate the horses ahead of time whether or not before the actual sale happens uh, but i've heard um you know i've heard keeneland which is you know the major thoroughbred sales company in the in the country they they've got to have uh, some some kind of a a format where horses can be viewed prior to and during the sale both it's interesting um, i don't i don't know the details of it but i've just heard heard that particularly the the horses that are sold in the early part of the sale first few days yeah. uh, but yeah, most now, definitely technology seems to be the way to go from this point on is helping a lot of business in our case i don't think it's going to be different yeah you know it's just been the technology has been an asset for people needing to have meetings during all this time period and and it looks like it it may be the way that many meetings go forward in the future uh, the way it sounds i mean because it's it seems to be working pretty good and uh and it really cuts down on travel expenses and uh, yeah overhead and, absolutely and, and as well as just uh risk of transmission of disease you know besides that so. and i think everybody a lot, lot lots of people are being forced to experience things that they never never crossed their minds as far as trying a new approach, right now everybody's being forced to try di things differently. And some companies have been following the news, they're even saying, huh, guess what? I think we are considering to have our folks 
more, you know, uh, remote work type of situation because yeah. things overhead, commute, more production. Of course, not everybody has the mindset to work from home. It, it, it requires discipline and methodology for you to, so otherwise, you just stay, you know, doing your joggings or staying by the pool. <laughs> There's no boss on the, on the other right. corner. But uh, I've, I've seen a, a change, big change. Again, technology has been a, a major factor. Um, now, take a little bit of gears here and uh, technology, talking about technology as an important asset for your operation. I know that you're not the person sitting in front of the computer to make data entry, of course, yet I have been a witness about your enthusiasm towards technology and that you see the benefit. How would you describe the moment when you got infected by the technology bug? And uh, can you give us a short version of your experience with technology at the 4.6 is most particular with software programs and the implementation of the paperless concept? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm of the age group that I'm, you know, most, I'm pre any kind of technology. I mean, uh, uh, because I'm, I'm pre, I can go back to pre fax machine, pre computer, uh, pre ultrasound, pre digital x ray, you know, and then, and then all the other. The way things have skyrocketed from there, you know, improvements in all those areas. But, uh, and you know, I think mine's been kind of a gradual deal. I mean, I, you know, you you get introduced to one thing and you really like it, you know, and uh, and you and, and I'm I'm not a, afraid, and I've been this way about just in my profession. I, I'm not afraid to try new things. So when I see something new, uh, I, I'm liable to try it, you know, whether, and, and it's not all technology based. It might be, a, it might be a treatment. Uh, it might be a feed. Uh, it might be some kind of a, a pen structure, corral or something. Uh, but if it looks, if it looks interesting, it might be uh, safer, better, quicker, more efficient, or whatever. I mean, all those different things you got to consider when you consider anything new like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I try a lot of that stuff, and now, and now there's times when I back up, and I go back to the old way. But I'm not afraid to try something new, and I'm, and technology's been that way, and I've. And I pick up on uh, things doing it uh, that that I that really make you know if I I find something that that I I get at something out of quickly yeah, you know whether it be looking up a horse record whether it be uh, uh, sending a document email. I mean, I, I just can't believe all the different things we can do now. Uh, you know, you're, you know, paying, paying bills uh, uh, electronically now from your from your iPhone. You know, I, I'm doing that now. I mean, I, I wasn't doing that initially. I mean, I paid bills some my, some of my personal bills through the computer. Uh, now I'm doing it from my iPhone. So, you know, and, and we've got, you know, with uh, our software, you know, wise option software, you know, we, you know, I can remember from the beginning what we had to work with, not, not well before wise options, the other programs, how, how some of those were more cumbersome. They wouldn't do so many of the things we're able to do now with, you know, and things just continue to get better. Uh, they do more things, uh, and of course now we got all these apps we have on our phone, and wise options included. I mean, but weather, uh, all all kinds of other news. I mean, I'm I'm 
I've used all of them uh, uh, on a daily basis. I mean, I'm just, and, and I just can't imagine not having it. But, but, but yet one time I didn't have it. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have, uh, uh, a, you know, a cell phone. I, I can remember the day, you know, that I moved from just a regular standard cell phone to a BlackBerry. And I just thought that was a BlackBerry was something unbelievable. And I just loved that thing. And then when I had to make the move from a BlackBerry to an iPhone, I thought the world had come to an end initially. <laughs> but, but now, I, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm good with it, you know, and I'm uh, very, I was very, one of those addicted to the, the, the rolling ball in the blackberry. Yeah. I, I just thought, boy, when that, when I had to quit that thing, I, I didn't know how, whether I was going to survive or not, but, it, but it's just been, it's, it's been an amazing journey for me. I mean, people, young people now today, they, they walk right in, they've got all this stuff, but I, you know, I remember when we didn't have any of that, uh, and we got along. I mean, we survived, but, but I think we're so much more efficient now, and and we uh, we can do things so much faster. Our communication skills have have improved tremendously. I mean, whether it's text messages, yeah, I know, emails, or just you know, cell phone, having a cell phone readily available to call, call or receive a call. I mean, it's just it's all. It's all awesome stuff, in my opinion, you know. And I mean, I know different people have have been apprehensive about some aspects of all this new technology. I mean, but uh, you know, it, to operate at the level I operate, and and many of the people I work with operate. I mean, you have to have it if you're not gonna. If you're not going to utilize it, you're not going to be keeping up uh, with the latest. You're not going to be doing as good a job, whether it be record keeping, communication, whatever. I mean, you, uh, and uh, you know, and the, you know, we've I've seen the improvements in ultrasound. I mean, I remember when we. You know, uh, I, I was got one of the first ones that came out. You know, to do the repro stuff with, and you know, the quality of images now uh, that we the things we can see on them. You know, uh, and share and with even software. You also tried so many different options in software. I think that you have a scope of. Um, you know the transition from you for YouTube because today the the, the four six is pretty much paperless as far as the record keeping goes. So how would yeah. you divide the history of the four six is going from the old binders to the mobile phone today? Well, it, I mean it's huge change, and I I didn't think we'd ever get away from the binders for the you know the hard where we had a card on every mare and stuff so forth, but we did. In fact, we. We pretty quickly did that. I mean, I, I can remember when we made when we made the change. We probably only a few months that first year used the cards, and then we just quit, you know, all together. Now, hospital records were were a little different because initially we didn't have we didn't have the hospital module, uh, so we had. Uh, we had written hospital records, and uh, and they were. Uh, I mean, I guess at the time, well, that was the only thing we had. But I mean, we just thought that was the only way to do it. And at the end of the month, you know, we do a whole hospital record on an animal, and then we would, in Wise Options, it, we'd just have a miscellaneous charge hospital record on a horse with a. Uh, a foal with rhodococcus pneumonia and then we'd say it had the total amount there for the whatever whatever we had to total up on the written record we'd have the total and then what what it was for and then we'd just say hospital record on file 
and then we were maintaining all those written records. But but it was a chore at the end of every month to have to go back through there, and, you know, price all that stuff, and you know, and you, you, it was hard to believe at the end of the month that you had written down that much information. But it was slow. It was slow. I mean, I can just remember sitting around for hours pricing hospital records, and then. And then I thought when we migrated to, you know, me, you mentioned paperless. Uh, I thought even though we were going to enter it, enter all that information, I thought we were going to still have to maintain a, a written record, you know, and I just couldn't imagine there initially we were going to be paperless on hospital records uh, too. So, and that, and that's where we're at today. You know, we've got, we initially had a, a more simple hospital module in wise options, but now it's a, uh, I mean, it's a complete deal. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's just much more. Uh, well, a, a little piece of history okay. here for the folks who are watching this, if you don't know, with the story that you just mentioned was back in 2006, 2007, and our very first version of the hospital modules was because Dr. Budget here um, poked my ribs and said, we got to do this. <laughs> we had to do it back then, and it was the beginning. But yes, today uh, we are in a complete different situation, and, you know, thanks to your uh, input and, and in request and exposing us to all the needs that involved. I, I do remember how it was back then and, and how complex it was, especially the treatment list that would have for the text to prepare every night for the night watchers and the next day, and then making those entries and different patients. And because what people don't realize, I think that Gen generically speaking, the vision most folks have about the four sixes is that usually we have the impression that it's a large breeding facility or a styling station. What I think people do not realize is that the four sixes also has a large hospital operation going on inside. Can you give us an idea about that side of in your operation that I believe people don't have much uh, knowledge about it, please? Well, I mean, we have, you know, because of the just number of resident horses we have year here year round, you know, where some some breeding operations, it's just their their big population of horses there is primarily there during breeding season. So, but we've got uh, horses of various age, uh, you know, all the way from the foals up to age geldings and. Besides the resident brood, we've got a big number of resident broodmares too. Uh, and then we serve the area here. We've got neighboring ranches, uh, neighboring large ranches that we do not only breeding work, but we do, you know, just hospital work, mm -hmm. uh, primarily horse work. Uh, and uh, so we've got, we've got those type of folks coming in here too. Uh, but we've, we, we deal with a pretty large hospital caseload on a year round basis. Um, uh, it gets a little larger during breeding season, usually with, particularly with, with all the, we got more outside horses on the premise and we got all the newborn foals and they're apt to get into a little more trouble either from an injury or a sickness standpoint than than other age horses but anyway we've we've got a big population of horses here uh that we're yeah. dealing with on a year-round yeah. basis i was surprised about the volume and the number of cases the number of um, patients present in your hospital side and it it is amazing to me how you guys really split the breeding operation from the hospital, completely different mindset, out the under the same roof. Now, switching gears a little bit here, um, talking about the return on investment made in technology. 
Uh, it is hard for us technology companies to compete with tangible items. Today, still, we have a hard time talking to some owners and managers to invest more in technology. A new ultrasound machine, a truck, or a new barn are still the frontliners on a budget allocation process nowadays. I wish we had more people like you who sees the benefit on an operation logistically organized. What would you have to say to those who still have a hard time allocating a higher budget to technology, and especially to those who are still afraid of the migration process to a paperless concept? Well, I mean, I thank you. Uh, I can guarantee there's an improvement in efficiency and, and probably even accuracy of record keeping. Uh, I think both of those things. I mean, you, you're going to be faster and more efficient and have a better set of records uh, with this system. Now, maybe, you know, I, and I can't tell you the size of the operation, you know, there maybe there's some, some are operations that might be small enough they can't justify it but any, anybody that's handling uh, any number of in, animals uh, I, I think this thing can really save them save them time and uh, and you know accuracy of records is extremely important whether it be breeding whether it be uh, any kind of animal health record or whatever, you know, accuracy is extremely important. I mean, there's a lot of built in things, as y'all know, uh, where you can s schedule future events, uh, uh, you know, and it, you know, and there's some built in safety mechanisms to make sure that things like that get rescheduled. Uh, and you've always got a, an opportunity to go in there and look and see what what hadn't been done that needs to be done. Um, you know, and the, the people that uh, they are out, our techs out doing the treatments every day, I mean, I, I think one of the things that I pointed out early on is, you know, when you got people going multiple different directions treating you know, you needed a way. You needed a way to know that a certain individual, you know, or that Joe Blow was out giving such such a treatment, and and it wouldn't get done twice. So so there's a way, as y'all know, that to someone can pin one. You know, make it pending, and you can see who's made it pending. So you know that person is out there either doing it or plans on doing it uh, so somebody else can do something else that it, it's not pending uh, nice and yeah, that we that, usually call that like silence communication silent yeah, communication that's that's very necessary when you got multiple people giving treatments you know if it's just one one person doing it it's a different deal but if you got if you got really more than one that's it's important to, to have that have that built in on your daily treatment list uh, and and this program's got that uh, and it's yeah. uh, uh, that's what what sometimes I say just one fold that you lose a potential chicken that you lose right there justify the whole entire investment you might make in technology that might help you to keep your records more straight that's right uh, yeah, it's extremely important. Yeah, well, but there's there's the fact of persistence. My next topic that I'd like to approach with you, it's about persistence. I'm pretty sure that you understand that not everyone has the endurance to go through the implementation phase a large project takes. Some people can simply give up or quit as soon as the first battles present themselves on the field. We had ourselves the 4-6's Ranch and Wise option, a pretty good example of that. 
uh, a major project takes where when we were in the initial states of the wise option six migration with the cloud environment and everything else. Yet you kept marching with us, focused on the big picture. And today we are enjoying a bunch of nice gadgets and tools, I think fruit of this hard work. Having that in mind, what is your experience in implementing new projects? What was hard and what was not as hard as you initially imagined? And uh, what made you keep marching? Well, I mean, I knew uh, the, the, reason, the reason we kept marching is because I, I, I really knew that what the end result was going to be. Uh, I guess I had a lot of faith in you, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> you the experience. But uh, that means a lot. But but, but really, that uh, you know, you know, had I been, had I not had the experience with you before, I, I might have been quite a bit more apprehensive about, uh, sure. and and it would have been easier to back out or whatever along way because it, it was tough it was really tough uh, uh and 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 we uh were already users before i mean we were uh, we understood the lingo the language and stuff and somebody totally new to it it might have been a little well, i'm sure it was a little uh, more awkward for them but uh you know i it, it, it was a it was a tough deal and it was hard yeah it was hard uh, but you were but, there and you you believed and you had this mindset you already said in the beginning of this podcast that you are a person who likes to try new things yeah. and uh and a person you know that sometimes returned uh back to the way it was before but you at least answered the question let me give it a shot and i think that's the brave part that lacks in not only in the horse industry but i think in, in general uh businesses you know to get that leap of faith to be curious about opportunities to make your operation more efficient and what is your advice to someone trying to get their operation going paperless or let's say that somebody's in a fear process of moving, um, how would you divide the, the, the decision-making process to see if you go or not go for something? Well, I mean, I, I just tell them right off not to forget the paper, uh, you know, from a record standpoint. I mean, it's just, it's, that's a no brainer. I mean, they may be scared to death of it, but I'd, I'd forget it. Uh, from a from a record standpoint the one thing that we've had trouble getting away from some of our people paper wise is our map here we've got a you know a horse location map that we that we use and we've got we can't seem to get away from that uh but but from a record hospital record reading record uh, you know it's 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 a no-brainer uh you know now one of the things backing up that i i want to say that, that that we learned and of course i i can speak to some other software development implementation situations uh new ones that when you're when you are implementing a new program and you make when you have a, a hiccup and make a change in it, sometimes it causes something else to break. And we, and we had to deal with all that kind of stuff. But, exactly. but I think going forward here, anybody now uh, with it, with this, you know, we've, <laughs> We, we we've we've been the uh, the victims of all the difficulties of that, and hopefully someone now uh, can can take this thing, and, and they won't have to experience those. But 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 I know of other 
like situations just like that where they were trying to implement a new software program and and it was in development and when they tried to fix something that was broke just like i said it made some other things break and then it just kind of a chain reaction hopefully there's little or no of that or little you know or none of that happens with anybody now when when they we are you know, we're, put this in the operation. Shit, uh, you know. like yes. I mean, don't well, you agree? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm sure, I mean, they, they won't go through the same thing we did. Uh, oh, absolutely not. Uh, the first year, I would say, uh, the first year was yeah, really okay. horrible. Uh, the cloud it was uh, completely changed. I think that was back oh, in 2016. Um, that was well, the toughest okay. one because well, it was really hard to course, migrate you know, everything in the cloud and, and uh, everything was crashy and we were trying new stuff and we were learning ourselves how to do the cloud as well. Uh, but in our universe today, today we are having the mobile app, everything is smoothed out. But that faith you guys kept on us and for us to keep marching is, is something that it's peculiar in certain users yeah. uh, yes in our universe just sharing with you we have that type of user uh, and, I, and I, seriously I, it's I'm more or less half and half those anything. who like to get something I ready and done it. so they I, will be on the back burner just say no I, let I, them I, try let somebody it. else use and get it you know debugged and tested then we're gonna pick it but there's this other side and most definitely you guys fit in that situation who like to test the new things in the embryo stage because you already noticed that when you do that yes there is the price you have to leave with glitches and crashes and stuff like that but at the end of the day the system has exactly the way you want it so uh, often times people say no i don't want to be a guinea pig and i say uh, i prefer to use the term mentorship because actually, you are the ones who are having the voice on how this thing is going to be. If you are one of those, no, whatever they give me, I'm going to use, fine, that's okay. But some people do have the thrive and, and, and even enjoy to create and participate on creating new things. And again, I'm really thankful that you are one of those uh, in the market. I believe Rachel has one question for us. I'd like Rachel to, to give you the floor and, and see if you can. If you'd like to ask anything, Dr. Blodgett. Well, my question kind of has a little bit to do talking about, you know, bouncing off that persistence and, you know, kind of that, you know, sometimes when you're implementing a new system, you run into a few roadblocks. What have you found that was most helpful? I know you guys have had an awesome team out there to help you on the day-to-day -day basis. But when implementing big changes, um, such as software or, or just new protocols and technologies, what do you find is, is the best way, you know, to do it amongst the team? Um, to make sure that, you know, the information reaches the people it needs to um, and make sure that everybody's on the same page um, as far as, you know, the goals of, of whatever you're implementing. Well, I think, uh, you know, of course, showing them the new, whatever new it is, but but I think it's extremely important. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I can look at myself here and, 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 and give you an example of it. It's important to, once you do see the new version, new, well, whatever it is, you need to use it. Uh, I mean, use it as much as you can, and then, and then you, and then you can just fly through it. And I, you know, and, and I, and you know, for me. Uh, you know, I still personally struggle with, with the thing that I, I'm not involved with on a daily basis. And that's, uh, you know, when I've got a new hospital case and I have to, you know, put initially put everything in the record, you know, that's something I don't do every day. But right. now some of the stuff I do every day, well, I just fly through it. Uh, and stuff I use, I'm used to looking at and doing, I, I do great with. So so I try to, 
encourage when we do get something new you know i try to tell everybody you know if, if you're going to be doing any of this you need to repeatedly do it and get and get yes. comfortable with it uh while, while it's new and then and then you can go back and do it on a routine basis uh, on a daily basis uh and there you know there's so many things that, i mean i one of the things I want to mention is that I think, uh, and this has been true in dealing with wise options from the very beginning, um, no, no, they don't to continually to want to improve it. It's not like you buy, you buy a set of software and it's going to be the same five a year from now that it is today. I, I guarantee you it's going to change and it's going to be a change for the better. Uh, you know, it's just because they see in all their users, they, they, uh, you know, we have an idea that's good, but, but Joe Blow down the road, he's got an idea too that, that I hadn't thought of. And it's eventually things like that are going to get put in there. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to buy a system that's, not going to change for the better uh th that's one of the big the best biggest and best things that i've noticed from the beginning to now uh, and i you know I, i'm sure there's new bigger and better things on the horizon uh, you know the and the app is you know the latest thing we got uh, and it's something i use now on a daily basis i use you know, I have remote access to my to Wise Options on my on my cell phone, but yet the app is much quicker, much easier uh, to access information. I can't access quite as much information, but I can access an awful lot, uh, and uh, and it's it's just quicker. I mean, I just like one of the first things I do every morning. Is I, you know, I'll look at the news right quick, but I also open up the app and look up, go down the worksheet, and uh, look, see what what all we got. And uh, and I used to have to go find a computer somewhere to look at that. Now I can do it right on the phone. Yes. 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 I know it just came out. Sorry, I know it just came out. I know it just came out yesterday, but have you had a chance to we I know we updated the new version to version 15 for the mobile app. Have you had a chance to download that on your phone yet? No, no, I haven't yet. OK, <laughs> yeah. I was getting some text messages from some other users this morning, so I was curious to see how how many of people had a chance to mess around with it yet with our yeah. calendar notifications. Yeah, uh, you said that uh, the the. Uh, the Location map has been one of the things we could not quite kill the paper yet. But I, I've learned that the cowboys were using the bubble app to get the horses in the pasture. Is that still the case? It is. You know, we've got, for the most part, anyway, uh, we still got one one holdout. But yet, I know he uses it. He uses both. But. Uh, it may be a multiple uh, marriage. But yeah, they they, they use it. Uh, yeah. And uh, have you ever thought you would see a cowboy with a mini computer in hand in the middle of the pasture? <laughs> I, I never, I never okay. would. So, uh, yeah, so well. Thank you. Well, of course, I, I mean, I, I the cell phone is amazing. Uh, you know, all the different things we do with that thing now. You know, it's just incredible. So, taking pictures yes and yeah, that's what and and it's one of the modules that we have worked we just have started working on is you know like you said we never stop trying to bring new things um, images is something that we are we are working on right now so you can record videos and take the pictures and put directly to the horse file uh, the notification coming even on your Apple watches and stuff. It's already placed. The calendar that we always dreamed of, it's today a reality, finally. So all the pieces together come. It's becoming a very beautiful project. We're really proud of the, 
the, the final results here. And one of the things that I, I – go ahead. Well, I mean, one of the things I'm looking forward to uh, is the, you know, from a client communication standpoint is – is uh, is some kind of a I mean, you and I have talked about it, but the, where you can, uh, you know, you we preg check a mare today and she's in foal, or, uh, or we just bred a mare and she'll be preg checked in 13 or 14 days, where we can send the, you know, click a button and uh, send a text message to a client. Uh, and notifying them, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, should we good. break the news, Rachel? <laughs> I think we should. I think we should. I'll let you do it. <laughs> we've actually we've actually been working on that, and we had a major breakthrough the other day. I think it was um, text messages are not far away. Definitely uh, within yeah. what would you say? I would say the next month. Uh, yes. Uh, well, that's yeah. yeah. We should have that in place. Yeah, well, that's that, that'll be outstanding. Uh, I look forward to that because, because you, as y'all know, you know, client communication is extremely important. You know, and yes. uh, especially when you're dealing with lots of animals, lots of clients, and uh, and everybody's used to receiving timely information. That's what technology's. You know, we've created an environment out there where people expect it. You know, I mean. 20 years ago they 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 didn't their their expectations weren't what they are today but uh, you know exactly it's, it's uh, you got to keep up yeah. with the joneses and you guys are the ones who keep us moving as you know i'm I, i'm not a horse person today today after 20 years working with you guys i i know more or less the terms and I still used to say that if you want to have a pretty good laugh, give me a horse to ride. But <laughs> other than that, you know, I understand a little bit the concept. At the end of the day, you guys are the one who dictate and tell us, you know, give us the compass for navigating the next steps. Uh, and talking about next steps, uh, the subject that I like to approach is about integration. Here at Wise Option, we are investing a lot of money in new software software integrations uh, to those of you out there watching this podcast uh, or live or recorded integration is when we have the wise option software exchanging data with other programs for example we have a beautiful project integrating wise option with global vet link also known as gvl so our users can easily access gvl services through Wise Option, eliminate the need to access multiple programs that are somehow relating to certain processes. We also have a project that integrates Wise Option with FedEx that should be coming out sometime in the fall. Now, one big item in our wish list is the day when Wise Option can exchange data with the AQHA, at least transfer the stallion breeding report and registered foals. Um, what's the status, Doc? You can tell us about the AQHA cloud project. And do you see a chance for us to integrate White's option with, with AQHA? And uh, if so, what type of services you think our users would enjoy to perform with AQHA through White's option? Well, I think uh, staying brief, breeding report submission would be uh, the first thing and I you know I, I know they've as y'all know they've just implemented a new software system and I know they're still ironing out some issues with it uh, trying to get it running more smoothly um, it was a huge project because it you know, it went, the number of records involved, you know, went back to 1940, and a lot, a lot of, a lot of animals in that, and a lot of, I imagine. you know, it's a huge deal, but, uh, but I, I think stay and breeding report, I mean, ultimately, I mean, if you could, if you can get some kind of communication where you could 
access records uh, if you know if uh, for you because we just find ourselves you know we're working in our we're working in wise options and we need to look up a horse record uh, you know get a registration number uh, maybe uh, look at uh, genetic tests uh, there's a lot of different things well we've got to uh, minimize wise options open up go to the AQHA website you know go through there I mean that would be the if, if you could if you could get the two talking to each other some way that'd be great I, I, if that's doable and uh, it's probably not something doable in the near term but eventually it could, could happen but that would be a good a good thing to be able to do if you could and maybe they can figure out a way to limit the things you can access and maybe you might have to pay for that service too and that, that'd be all right because we're, we're paying them now anyway uh, but if we could figure out a way to where we could do it through through wise options it'd be good uh, yeah and uh, exactly i think that security number one the limitation in the scope of the data that can be accessed, you know, authentication processes and stuff like that. But, you know, on our end, we are more than willing to go through the hoops and loops, whatever is necessary to guarantee that we do according to AQHA's, um, you know, uh, system requirements. So uh, if you can, I know that you have your your access to, to, to the association openly. So whatever you can facilitate for us to get this bridge shortened so we can make this project happen sooner the better. I think the whole community is going to enjoy a lot. I, I foresee, like just like it's happening today with the Global Vet Link. It, it, it's efficiency, it's time, it's you know less bureaucracy. And every time we talk about volume, when you put the, the, the variable volume in the formula, that's when things get complicated. A place like your operation at your size there, it's possible without having the push technology can give whatever we can save in number of clicks or expediting registration process or whatever it is. Like now in FedEx, we are trying to get the shipment labels already printed out through as option. That, that, just that is, you know, um, a, a huge benefit that we can provide to our users. Dr. Blodgett, I really appreciate your time. I, I want to thank you so much, you know, for, you know, taking your, you know, a moment from your busy time, your busy day to be with us. Um, but more than anything, um, I want to, you know, thank you for your faith, for your loyalty, being a, a good customer, a good client, a good friend, because we've been, you know, through so many things together already. And uh, I hope to keep doing this for many, many years ahead as well. So thank you so much. You betcha. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Blodgett, for joining us. Thank you, Eduardo. And thank you all to watching. We hope to see you next time. And please stay tuned shortly. Before you close, I'm sorry, okay. before you close, my last visit before pandemic with the Remuda was at the Four Sixes Ranch. Tell me, Susie, that I miss her food, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. All right. Yeah. I will. <laughs> now I'll let you close right. this. Okay. You. Thank you. Right. Everyone stay safe. Thank you. Bye.